In the previous lesson, we explored all the tools that we have at our disposal in Photoshop, so now it's finally time to start painting. In this lesson, we'll be exploring a simplified digital workflow just to get used to using our tools in a digital environment. We'll keep this process fairly simple for now and dive into more advanced techniques later. While our end goal is to be able to paint original images from imagination, we'll start this course off by using references. Using a reference takes a lot of complicated decision-making off your plate and allows you to focus on learning just the process. The important thing for this assignment is that your reference has very clear and simple shadow shapes. That'll make the whole thing a lot easier. Let's begin by making a clean and accurate drawing to work from. I know we're all excited to get to the really fun stuff like color and lighting and special effects, but none of that really matters if the drawing underneath is flawed. So it's important to take our time with the drawing step and build a solid foundation that we can paint on top of. For our first painting of the course, let's start with a simple figure painting. If you've gone through the Proko figure drawing course, a lot of the stuff I'm doing here should be quite familiar to you. I'm going to start off with a fairly simple drawing lay-in here, focusing first on the gesture of the figure, largest forms first, such as the rib cage, hips, and head, and drawing the limbs as relatively simple cylinders with just a hint of anatomy applied to them. You'll see as I go through this drawing process that I'm using Lasso Tool and Free Transform to adjust my proportions and positioning of the elements fairly regularly. For me, I don't mind using Free Transform to adjust my proportions as I go, because as long as my drawing issues get solved, it doesn't really matter to me how I got there. I'm just trying to be as quick and efficient as possible. Of course, it's better if you can get your drawing right on the first time through careful observation and precise measuring, but with digital we also have the advantage to flexibly change our drawing and proportions on the fly so we don't necessarily have to get everything perfect on the first go. Of course, the more accurate you are in the beginning, the less you'll have to change later. I'm also working with more of a constructive method than an observational method, so I'm looking at my reference, observing the shapes, forms, and gestures, but then drawing them using perspective and simple shapes in 3D form. Rather than simply focusing on the two-dimensional shapes and silhouettes from my reference, as I go through this process, some of my shapes and forms may end up being slightly different from the reference. I'm not terribly worried about this, as for this exercise, I'm more concerned with the painting and the drawing. So as long as my figure looks accurate on the canvas, I'm not terribly concerned if it matches the reference perfectly. As long as the overall proportions and perspectives feel correct, I'll be happy with it. Of course, I can still use some of the 2D shapes of the reference to double-check my proportions, such as the small negative space between his closer arm and his further leg, creating a little triangle of white next to the belly. I found that to be a helpful reference for my proportions, but you'll notice that the reference also has a small triangle of negative space between the two arms and next to the pec. In my drawing, that's not there. So even though this is different from the reference, I'm going to leave it in this case because I'm confident in my construction and that my proportions are generally correct. It just means that my pose is slightly different. You'll also notice throughout this drawing process that I started with relatively simple forms, but I'm getting increasingly complex as I go. The way I like to do this is simply grab my eraser tool and lightly erase over my line work with a soft brush. This will knock back the previous lines of my sketches that I can then refine either by fixing problems or by adding additional details that are missing. And by repeating this process gradually over the entire figure, I can refine my drawing from a simple gesture with basic forms to a fully fledged anatomical drawing. If you zoom in too early and start working on things like arms and legs and feet and lose context of the whole figure or the whole painting, it's very easy to overdo your rendering and create areas of unnecessarily high contrast that have to be fixed later. So whenever you're painting, whether digitally or traditionally, it's best to start with big general shapes and stay zoomed out. And then, once your overall painting is in a good place, you can zoom in a bit more and start working on the details. I'm also going to sketch out the chair, 
as any time you have a figure that's sitting or leaning against something in the environment, it's very important to draw the object in the environment to be sure that the weight of the figure is properly distributed on the object they're interacting with. Once I'm happy with my drawing, it's time to start digging into the painting. All right, so now we have a solid drawing to work on top of. Remember that the drawing doesn't necessarily have to be super clean or pretty, it's more of a roadmap for our painting. As long as it provides us with useful information that will help us make good painting decisions, then that's enough for now. If you're working in a style that's going to retain the line art on top of the painting, you might want to do an extra cleanup pass here, but for this exercise, that's not necessary. For this assignment, the shapes and values are already pretty much decided by the reference, but in the future we'll be working more from imagination and we'll have to invent some of these shapes and values ourselves. So practicing working from a reference to understand how shapes and values work in real life will make that whole process a whole lot easier later on. So we've invested a lot of time in preparation before we actually start painting, but it's important to take our time with these early stages. The more accurate your drawing is and the stronger your value block in, the easier it will be to execute your final painting. Every painting has a million problems that are going to need solved, and it's important to try to solve them one at a time rather than all at once. If you start your painting too early, you might get halfway through and then realize, oops, I messed something up in my drawing. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! And now, instead of just having to fix the drawing, you also have to fix your values, and maybe your colors, maybe even your layer structure, and now all of a sudden you're dealing with 10 problems at once instead of just one. Breaking our painting process into clear, distinct stages helps us to focus on solving one problem at a time and is much easier on our brains. I'll begin the painting process by toning the canvas with a simple dark gray. Once I've toned my canvas, I'm going to start applying some basic value patterns to the figure. This is exactly the same process from the Proko figure drawing course, so if you've gone through that, this should be very familiar. I'm not worrying about reflected light or anything excessively detailed at this point, I just want to make a clear separation between my light and shadow values. Once I've blocked in all my shadow shapes, I want to separate the figure from the background a little bit, so I'm going to grab a lighter value and simply paint around the figure. I'm not going to paint around the entire figure, as I want the focus to be more around the face and chest and let the legs fall away into more subtle contrasts. This contrast of having my lightest value next to my darkest value right near the face will emphasize my focal point. Now I'm beginning to work into my shadows a little bit. It's not quite rendering yet, but I'm trying to separate out some of the different layers of these forms. So if I look at my reference, the arm as a whole is brighter than the chest behind it. So I want to be sure to separate those two with value, while still being careful to pay attention to my value control, and be sure I don't lose the clear impression of the shadow pattern I established in the previous step. I'm also getting into a little bit of blending at this point, which is quite easy with this soft, textury brush. Basically, the way I like to blend is to eye drop one of the colors that I'm trying to blend, and then lightly paint it over the color I'm trying to blend it into, so I might eye drop a shadow color and then lightly paint over a midtone with a very subtle pen pressure. Because my brush's opacity is controlled by pen pressure, the brush stroke I lay down will then become an intermediate tone between the two values that I'm working with, and I can then use my eyedropper tool again to select that intermediate value and paint the transition between the two. The more you practice this, the easier it will be to manipulate edges and get exactly the right level of rendering and blending that you want. Speaking of blending and softening edges, don't forget that we have the smudge tool at our disposal. I like to do most of my blending by hand with the brush, but the smudge tool does a great job too. The smudge tool allows you to smear the pixels on your canvas as though they were soft charcoal or oil paint, which is really useful for blending and edge control. You'll also notice that the way I'm adding a lot of forms to this figure is by painting the light values on top of them. 
The value I toned my canvas with is pretty close to the midtones or shadows of the figure in the reference. So because the tone of the canvas is equivalent to my midtones of the figure, I can grab a lighter value and begin rendering the lights on top to create my forms, and then simply blend them to taste. Personally, I find this to be a really intuitive way to paint digitally. You can also start with your lighter values and add shadows to them, but I personally find something very appealing and intuitive about starting with midtones and gradually working my way towards lighter lights and darker darks. I feel like it helps me keep my values under control over the course of the painting. It's also worth noting that as I'm going through this painting process, I'm looking for areas where I can omit and simplify details to create a clearer sense of focus and contrasting areas of complexity and simplicity. So for example, if you look at his belly, I've let the edge of the silhouette kind of bleed into the background a little bit with a soft edge. I've also let the top of his head kind of blend away into the background, as well as the edge of his lat muscles as they approach the chair. Here I'm adding some simple values to the chair. I'm not going to render every form and highlight on the chair as clearly as it's shown in the reference because I want the figure to be the focal point and let secondary areas become much less detailed. Here I'm starting to work on the background a little bit. Now that I have more values on the figure established, it's a bit easier for me to tell where the background needs to go. So I'm tweaking some edges, strengthening some contrasts, as well as adding a subtle indication of a floor plane by carrying the light from the right side of the image over to the left. So this figure isn't just sitting in an ambiguous floating gray texture, but rather there's some sense of space to the painting. At this point, all that's left to do on our painting is final cleanup and refinement. We've spent a lot of time carefully building up our painting layer by layer, and now all that hard work is rewarded as we get to jump into all the fun little details and highlights and fancy blended edges that make our painting really shine. Once I'm happy with the figure as a whole, I can start going into more detailed areas like the face and hands. And at this point, I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer. I recommend not zooming in too much. You'll notice that throughout this whole painting, I've stayed zoomed out to the point where I can see the entire painting. I'm following the same process for the face that I did with the figure, placing down a tone, eye dropping that tone, lightly painting to create a transition color, and then repeating that process over and over to blend. I'm also looking for areas to lose detail in the face. For instance, I'm letting most of the eye bleed into the shadow of the eye socket, as well as the nose and the shadow side of the face. There's a fair amount of detail in these shadows in my reference, and I could add those if I wanted to, but I'm choosing to let my information live in the lights and let the shadows fade away to more obscurity. This will result in a more atmospheric painting and give the viewer's eye a clearer direction of where they should be looking. I've also chosen to make the beard the darkest value in this painting. That, combined with the bright background behind, reinforces that the face is the focal point and other areas are secondary. Here I'm beginning to refine the hands a little bit. Again, I'm keeping them fairly loose and gestural. As long as the general gesture and forms are accurate, I'm not terribly concerned with getting every tiny detail of the hand in my painting. Now that I have the entire figure, as well as the areas of detail painted in, I'm sort of combing through and looking for other areas where I can erase further detail. Sometimes the easiest way to finish a painting quickly isn't to add more detail and rendering to it, but rather to look through the areas and ask if any of them have detail that doesn't need to be there. In this case, I'm going to simplify most of my shadows to just a single flat value. You can see that on the chest, the belly, and the legs, I'm ignoring a lot of the reflected light and just simplifying those areas to flat values. And as long as I get the edges of those flat values transitioning into the midtones correct, it will still feel like three-dimensional form. 
We'll discuss concepts like value control, edge control, and how to render light on form in great detail in future lessons. So for this exercise, just focus on getting comfortable with the process of digital painting, working on your tablet, using the brush tool, setting up and using your hotkeys efficiently, blending using the eyedropper and the brush tool, and applying any of your existing painting and drawing skills to this new and exciting medium. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I know we're all excited to get to the really flashy things like color and special effects, but it's important to start with a solid foundation that we can later build on top of. The process I've shown here is really the backbone for the entire course. This kind of study is kind of like a push-up for your art muscles. It's not something you do once and then you're strong forever. It's something you have to continually do over your entire life in order to build your strength and then maintain your strength over time. So take your time with this assignment and really try to get it right and focus on the process. I can't overstate enough how important it is to do simple exercises like this over the course of your development. By now, I'm sure you've guessed what the assignment is. Grab yourself a good reference or use one of the ones we've provided and try out the process shown in this video. Start with a clean drawing, do a value block in, and then build up your painting working general to specific until it's finished. Also, I'll be doing a critique video of your grayscale paintings, so be sure to do the assignment and submit it on the course page for a chance to get some personalized feedback. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you're interested in expanding your digital painting skills even further, consider purchasing the full course at proco.com slash digital painting. The premium course has more lessons, demos, and you can even submit your assignments for a chance to receive personalized feedback. You can also post your work on the Proco forums and share your journey with other artists. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.